Hello, today we will be learning how to prove invalidity. Now before we uh, start checking how to go for uh, proving an argument invalid, uh, let us try to understand when we were trying to prove validity, what we were doing. We were basically using a natural deduction method. Natural deduction method is basically like rules of inference, rules of replacement, uh, conditional proof. We have already taken conditional proof. Uh, we will be also taking indirect proof then we will be taking standard conditional proof. All these are natural reduction methods basically. <clears throat> Proving invalidity on the other hand is more or less like putting the values and finding whether we can or because if, if you remember the definition of validity, what we used to do, uh, we will say that an argument is valid if it is impossible for the premises to be true and conclusion false. That means if we can find a substitution instance which can make the premises true and the conclusion false, then the argument is going to be invalid. The same thing we will be doing in proving invalidity. What we will have? We will have P1, P2, P3 up to Pn as premises and C is the conclusion, right? So this is like the uh, premises and the conclusion of the argument. Now, <clears throat> we have to find a substitution instance because P1 might be P1 is like uh, say R wedge S, right? and say the P2 is suppose S wedge T and say P3 might be say T implies Z and something something and say the conclusion says R uh, say wedge uh, Z like suppose this is the argument. Now what you need to do is that you need to find a substitution instance which can make the premises true and conclusion false. Now how to do that? What we do is that we will find substitution instances for the conclusion first, right? How to make the conclusion false? Now, if you see this uh, argument, like suppose if you find this argument. Now, the, in this case, the argument will be, uh, uh, if you see this argument and if you see the conclusion of this argument, so you will see that this conclusion is going to be false when we will put the value of R as false, as well as the value of Z also as false. Right? So we understand this, that in order to make the conclusion false, we have to put the value of R as false as well as Z as false. Now once we have put that, we will make the conclusion's value false, fine, okay. Now the next target is to make the value of other things true. So we have to retain the value of R as false and Z as say false as well, wherever there will be R and Z. And rest of the values we can change. Like suppose if we make S as true, so you will find that this line will be true because true uh, like false wedge true will be true. Then S wedge T, we have S as and uh, we can put T as false. Suppose T as false, right? So still T wedge uh, F, this will be also true. Now T implies Z. So now if you see T implies S. Now you know the value of T is false and S is true. So false implies true will be true. So this is going to be true. S wedge T you know that it is true. P uh, R wedge S you also know that this value is also true. Now you can see that we have made the premises. Now there are more premises. We have not used the values but you can take the values any any uh, values and if it is possible look there can be a question where it is not possible to uh, make the premises true and conclusion false. In that case, the argument will be valid. But if there is a substitution instance which can make the premises true and the conclusion false, then definitely that argument is going to be an invalid argument. That is the whole theory of this question. Maybe it will be easier for you because right now it looks a little bit sketchy and usually theories are always a little bit, you know, boring or something like that. So let us take a question from your book and uh, once we will be taking the question from the book it will be even easier for us to understand but <clears throat> as I told you that something which you need to remember is that you need to retain the value of the conclusion and the trick is that first try to make the conclusion false and after that retain the value of those things which are there in the conclusion and try to make the premises true now let us take a question from your book like there is a question like this e implies f wedge g. This is the first premise. The second premise is g implies h dot i. This is the second premise. 
The third premise is negation of H. So the conclusion is therefore E implies I. Now this is the question which has been given to us. Now we need to prove the validity or the invalidity of this question and since it is the question of proving invalidity in the question paper it can come that prove the validity or invalidity of an argument so or, or the invalidity of an argument so the first thing which you need to check is whether the argument is invalid if the argument is invalid then there is no need to prove the validity right validity will always be a longer uh, solution and this and that usually more complicated and so on 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 the other hand if it is proving invalidity it is easier it is faster it is always uh, um, it gives you a very quick check right so what we need to do, we need to make the premises true and conclusion false. And the idea is first, you make the, the first thing is that you make the conclusion false. Okay, this is your first step. Conclusion, make conclusion false. This is the first step. Then second step is retain the value of conclusion. Retain the values of the conclusion, then put those and other values in premises. So this is the idea that the first thing is that you need to make the conclusion false. In whichever way you will make the conclusion false, there can be more than one way, right? There can be question which can be solved only using because there can be only one substitution instance which is making the premises true and the conclusion false. But as you know that there can be more possible uh, substitution instances which can make the premise true and the conclusion false. So in that case there can be more ways of doing the question but whatever. Your idea should be that first you have to make the conclusion false. This is the first thing which you should do. Second in whichever whatever values you have used in the conclusion that needs to be retained that needs to be retained and those values only you need to prove or you need to put in the premises right and apart from that you are free to use for other values say other values because like you can see in this question e and i are there so suppose we have taken e as true and i as false to make the uh, conclusion false so we are bounded by the understanding of e and i the rest of the values like f g uh, h you can make it uh, you can make it uh, true in any ways right so or you, you can put the values in any ways so that the premises become true so that is the whole idea now how to do this question now let us uh, I will remove this part or maybe I can keep this part as well so that it is easier for you to follow now as you can see that we have to find the value of e or values of e i then f then G, uh, H, and that's all, right? These are the things because we have E and I here, then F, G, F and G is there, and H is there, okay? So nothing else. We need only these five values because there is E, there is F, there is G, there is H, there is I, right? So only these values, we need to find out that however, in whatever way, we will find this value. So in order to make this false because this is the idea that you have to make this as false now in order to make this false you know that there is only one possible uh, substitution instance which can make this false this whole value false how when you put e as true and i as false that is the only case if you remember the truth table of uh, material implication so in that case <clears throat> what was happening was that if you take e as true and i as false then only the value will come as false or else all the values will be true right so what we will do we will put the value of e as true and i as false so this has made the combined value of this as false so now this is taken care of now we need to make these true and false now we can start from here to here or we can start from here to here but let us start from here to here hmm? that's not matter we can make these lines uh, this line uh, true first then this line then this line or you can try to prove this line this line this line or you can start from here and go above or below depends because we just need the substitution instance now in order to make negation of h 
as true. We need to prove or put the value of h as false, right? So this line will be true, right? So our this line has been made to be true, okay? Fine. <clears throat> now we need to make this line as true. Now we already know that h is false. So false dot anything will be false, right? So what will be the value of g so that we can make this whole value as true? We need to put the value of g as false. Now, irrespective of the fact, whatever is the value of i, i is also false. But in any of the circumstances, false implies false will be uh, true. And therefore, we have put g as false. And therefore, this line value will be true. Now, we only are left with the value of f. But let us see the first line. In first line, e is true, right? e is true e implies something needs to be true so if e is true as you can see e is true so this whole value has to come as true now you can see g is false so f has to be true so we will put the value of f as true now if you see this this is the solution of the question right so whenever it comes in your examination that uh, proof this argument to be invalid or show that this argument is invalid you need to make this uh, box where you will find or you will tell us the values of all these atoms as I say What is going to be the value of all these or what is what, what will be the values of these atoms? And once you will be putting this value, so we will check with this there can be more than one solution in this case I don't think so that there is more than one solution because there is only one possible way in which you can make e as uh, e implies i as false and that is that you need to put e as true and i as false so we have put e as true and i as false so we got this value now if you see the combined impact so all these premises have become true right all these premises have become true and the conclusion has become false so what does it say it says that there is at least one possible uh, substitution instance which can make the premises true and conclusion false so the whole idea of solving this question or the whole idea of uh, proving invalidity lies with this understanding that is there is there a substitution instance which can make the premises true and the conclusion false if you are successful in finding that yes there is a substitution instance which can make the premises true and the conclusion false so you have proven the invalidity of the argument so there are a lot of questions in the book which you can try and it's going to be pretty simple as I told you so you need to uh, make a lot of effort uh, in solving these questions and check that, uh, whether you can make the premises true and conclusion false and I will uh, ask you also to see if there is more than one possible solution like this is one possible solution there can be more in this question maybe not but uh, in other questions you will find that there is more than one possible uh, solution for it or sometimes you can see that even if you put the value as true of something or false of something or something so in that case also uh, there will be no change uh, in the results so uh, <clears throat> that is the whole idea you check it for yourself you check it for uh, um, from all the books which you have and uh, see whether you can find more than one solution for a question in whenever there is a question like proving invalidity there will be at least one solution only in the examination it can come that prove the validity or invalidity of a given argument so you can check first whether you can make the premises true and conclusion false if you cannot make it there is no possible institution uh, instance then you can definitely go for uh, proving the validity of the question so uh, try uh, questions from your book and whatever doubts you have we can always take it in the class thank you